Just when you thought we were done, mm-mm, we got some bonus takes. Uh huh. I had three extra ones that I hadn't gotten to in the episode, so I thought, oh, let's, you know, see what we come up with these three here. So let's see. Uh, Getty's top two base riffs: Malignant Narcissism and Digital Man. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, everybody's starting to think like, what's that? What's that riff? Yeah. Oh, what's it sound like? Right? Jim's dyspeptic peptic over there. I already, this I is already the sound of it. You, you already I already have answer. my answer. Right. I got my answer. All right, Derek, what do you got? Do you I'm got? gonna say great take only because I, I got a bunch of stuff in my head. I'll get back to you on that one later. <laughs> the beauty of the beauty of the outtakes, Ryan. Uh, yeah, I mean that. Uh, I'll say great take as well. I think it's pretty. Uh, they're up there. Don't get me wrong, Getty's got a ton of awesome riffs. But I mean, the camera eye comes to mind. You know, leave that thing alone comes to mind. What headlong flight? I think has a like a bass solo in it. Other songs come to mind, but yeah, okay. I think that's a pretty good take. Okay, Jerry. Uh, well, let's debate that one. All There's right. So many more songs that I would have thought of first before those two songs. Not that, like you said, that they're bad songs. It's just, I don't know, free will. I don't know. There's tons, just tons. Uh, right. Peter, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I guess let's debate. Um, I don't know if you remember that song, My Favorite Headache of a solo album. Ooh. Which oh, the, I the title track. Could, I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, he didn't uh, say as part of Rush, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Throw it in there. details, and, details. Uh, yeah, maybe even stick it out or something, just to go back to back to that song. But yeah, and I can see a couple better. And I see yeah. Jim is itching to give his answer here. <laughs> no, it's it, it's a good take. <laughs> But it's but not I a will, great take. But, right? not, but I'm going to debate it. <laughs> Which right? automatically yeah. defaults you to let's debate. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, and other songs came to mind for me too. Uh, Circumstances, Lock and Key, mm. Marathon. Yeah. I mean, he's he's had, and I yeah. can keep going, but I mean, yeah, there's there's so, and, and everybody's right. Like everybody mentioned, like there's just so many fantastic bass riffs that Giddy plays. It's it is hard to nail down to just one anyway. All right. Now, let's move on to something from Neil. Um, his best sounding drum kits were the Tamas, which were used between permanent waves and power windows. I'm gonna say great. I'm gonna say great take only because I don't really know anything about drums and I love those albums and how they sound. So yeah, great take for me. <laughs> awesome. This is a gym right. question. Uh, this is a gym question. Yeah, I might, I might is, have to a- default to Jim on this one again. But no, I, I'm actually gonna. Yeah, I'll say great take. I don't know enough about drums to really again dive into that. But yeah, I think now that you've sectioned them off or sectioned off, you're saying. Permanent Waves to Power Windows. Yeah, I think they're those are fantastic drumming records. So sh- absolutely, the sound, the sound of the drum, the qual, like just to, just like because he started with Slingers, yeah. then he went to Tamas, then he went to Ludwig's, and then he finished off with DW. Actually, what did he play on Presto and Roll the Bones? That was Ludwig's. Ludwig. Okay, well let's debate. Those are the best sounding drums because you can't even hear them. <laughs> well, what what did I miss? What I uh, it, was a, it was a joke. Uh, Ryan oh, was uh, I was digging on the recording quality of those, yeah. so, oh. which I agree with Ryan about that. Uh, yeah. I would love to have those re- <laughs> those two records remastered with. Heck yeah! Could you? Yeah, yeah. No, agreed. Uh, Jerry, um, I'm gonna say, um, let's debate. Uh, again, I defer to Jim, but again, I I love the light that way the later albums sound, right? I love the live kit that he had that was made out of that fifteen hundred year old log pulled from a bog or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that sounded great. I mean, when he started yeah. using the DW drums, I think they sound awesome. So that that comes my, down to a personal preference. I get that, right? Right, but mm-hmm. yeah. How about you, Peter? 
Well, <clears throat> I'm going to say great take. However, I don't think Neil would agree in so much as uh, after um, counterparts, remember he went through that period where he reinvented his, uh, his drumming style and he got into uh, the orbital motion and stuff like that. So I think Neil would, would say himself that he improved as a drummer and maybe his sound improved as well in the test for echo sessions. But, uh, but I do prefer the sound of his drumming, as you said, Paul. So that'd be a great take. Jim, resident drummer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, so this is just like the sound of the drums itself that you're thinking, right? Like the drum. That's quality. what I was, that, this is where I was think, going okay. with. Yes. So I'm going to say, let's debate. Um, I love the Ludwigs. Okay. I, I think they sound so, so great and full, but like, like Peter mentioned, when Neil reinvented himself for the test for echo stuff, and it was the very first time he's using DW, those drums are sound so warm and resonant and beautiful. They are, that's one of my favorite drum sounds of his is from that album. But overall, I prefer the Ludwigs. All right. Finally, last one. Another one with songs. Favorite song, you know, Xanadu. Um, <laughs> is that what you said? Xanadu. That's yes. your default. <laughs> oh my gosh, what am I going to do with you guys? Oh, I know. Oh. Can't take you anywhere. I, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, best. See, I was going to pick best, then I, I couldn't pick one, so I picked two. Um, best two songs over eight minutes. Cygnus X1 Book One and Natural Science. Do you want a list of the songs or just to kind of refresh your memory? Or I've got them all written down. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, do you want the list or you just eight minutes? No, I, to, I, I'm, I, I got a couple in my head. I want to debate right. on that one. Let's debate. Okay. Okay. I mean, we were talking about earlier 2112. Yep. Hemispheres. Mm -hmm. Even La Via Strangiato, that's over eight minutes. Those three yes. right there, and there's like in their you could say classic period. And even mm -hmm. the the camera eye too. Camera eye is over almost is over ten. Yep. Mm. That was our last one. That was over that that over eight minutes. <clears throat> uh, who's next, Ryan? What'd you say? Natural science, natural science, and and Cygnus, Cygnus X one book X one, book one. Okay, well, let's debate because 2112, <laughs> Book Two, La Villa, The Camera Eye, they're all better than Book One, in my opinion. So there's my, there's my, Natural Science is, is mm. top two or three. Mm. Mm. But I'm debating because of Cygnus X1. I think Cygnus X1 is, this may be a hot take, but I think it's overrated. Um, I just don't think it's good, but I think it's overrated. I think 2112 is better. I think Hemispheres is better. I think natural science is better. I think in terms of epics, I mean, like in terms of, in terms of the, the longer uh, La Bella is better. All right. Well, well, I'll accept your, your, your opinion. Uh, <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> and I mean, it's just, it's all in good fun, right? Like for, for yeah, he, doesn't like, yeah. Yeah. My opinion. Oh, yeah. he doesn't agree with it, but he accepts it. I'll, I'll hide. Right. There you go. Go hide. Go, go hide in shame. <laughs> um, I'm going to say let's debate for exactly what Ryan said. Okay. Yeah. Not that Cygnus is uh, Cygnus X1. Book one is a bad song. Just that I even like hemp, you know, I like got others that I would put before it. So natural science, though, obviously. I think this, I think back, I think this was on the previous episodes we debated on if book one or book two is better. I can't remember who was writer that brought that one up. I can't remember, but mm. book two. Book two. <laughs> 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 let's finish this one first peter <laughs> i would say a uh, um, great take on the natural science but i would replace uh cygnus with uh xanadu so oh duh oh shit holy shit yeah that's another one i didn't think of that one either <laughs> I, that, that one just eluded me oh yeah <laughs> listen i i yeah. have the list oh, ter no terrible take. to hear it terrible take. terrible take <laughs> <laughs> oh jim what do you have you're, you're uh, in a debate, I'm sure. Right? Well, I think yeah, we know what, now. Just, <laughs> yeah. what, just what Peter said. 
Yeah, I agree on the, the, the Xanadu. I mean, that's, that's my, that's my go-to. Well, that's all I got for takes, guys. And obviously, you don't see think highly too much of them. So, uh, you know, <laughs> unless anyone else has a take they want to throw in there, we're going to call it a wrap for this time for this extra episode. Yeah, who's got one? Great, who's got one extra great take? Just straight off the top of your head. They Someone you've been they want to throw in. Yeah, anyone? Would "Log from the Bog" be a good song? What? Log, Log from, from the bog. bog. <laughs> yeah. It's a good band Actually, name. Yeah. <laughs> it is. If you're gonna have a song name like that, you gotta have Gollum on the cover though. <laughs> right. That's gonna be right. yeah. here, here's my hot take for Derek, oh. okay? <laughs> Snakes and Arrows is a top five rush album. Derek. Uh, I'm gonna have to debate that. I would literally put Vapor Trails or Clock or Angels above above snakes and arrows mainly just because i feel like it, it drags so it's top, on the so it's top three is what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know something about that album it just drags on by the time i get to the middle i just i, I just have troubles getting through it while vapor trails has the emotional weight behind it and clockwork has that amazing concept but i will say snakes and arrows does have the one thing up its sleeve which is the amazing acoustic work that out into a lot of the songs and they're meant to be played in a live setting. So that's the one yeah. thing that's unique about yeah, that cool. one record. But I always put the other two kind of better. It's almost like the Pharaoh the Kings thing, the how it was seen as like the middle one, middle album, but then you have these big epics surrounding it. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I just yeah, want to see what he would yeah. say from, from, the, <laughs> from the, uh, the actual episode. All right. Well, anyone else got a great take or, or rather a take that they want to throw at us before we wrap off the top of their head? Anything that came to mind during the episode? Something that's just burning a hole in your brain. All right, Paul, take us home. One of the things, one of the well, things I, I know I'm going to get blasted for this one, uh oh. but I would argue that uh, Nick Russ, however you pronounce yeah. the producer. Russ the last yeah. Yeah. That would be the worst producer that Rush ever worked with. No. Wow. Really? No. Oh. No. 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 Yeah. I think I think you're gonna get a resounding no on that one. In in what respect? Yeah. 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 What makes you say that? Uh that's for another episode that's way too long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So I, he, I, he, uh, he knew that he was gonna be kicked off, so he said, All right, we'll do it for next time. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's, it's a cliffhanger. Well, well, who produced Presto and Roll the Bones? Was it uh, that, that's that's Rupert Hine? That was Rupert Hine, Rupert right? Hine. Yeah, so I would, I was to gonna say, I put Nick way above Rupert, yeah, nothing yeah. against Rupert, but yeah. just well, overall and, sound and, quality. Well, just re- remember the, the producer and the sound engineer are not exactly but, the same. Well, thing. that's true, too, yeah. Well, <clears throat> considering Getty's vocals are already uh, somewhat in decline. <laughs> I think it, it, it is incumbent on the producer to maximize what you can get out of the uh, out of the vocalist. Uh, sure. His uh, his uh, vibrato was suffering, and uh, and you could hear it throughout the album. And okay, I can understand if he if the performances live would be a little uh, you know noticeable, but on the studio records himself, I would I would hope that the producer could have worked better with Getty. And allowing him to uh, not carry out those notes uh, as much as he did throughout, you know, like one note carried over like four or five syllables or, or beats. He just dragged it out and it just didn't flow as much as uh, it did in, in previous albums. And I think that was because of uh, his declining vocal ability. And uh, I don't know if Nick uh, could have uh, done a little bit better working with Getty to uh maybe shorten the words or shorten the amount of notes or something like that. That's what I think was, okay. Did you ever see the movie Amadeus with um, um, Mozart? Oh, there's like, a, yeah, years ago, yeah. There's a scene where the king sees Amadeus uh, or Mozart perform something and he asks him, how was it? The guy, the king goes, it's great, it's great. And Amadeus wants to know, Mozart wants to know, was it perfect? He goes, well, not quite perfect. Why wasn't it perfect? Well, there might've been just maybe, too many notes 
just what which notes exactly just maybe too many notes and that's the way i feel a little bit about the last two albums i think that they threw everything mm -hmm. but the kitchen sink into those last two albums and it just was one too many notes mm -hmm. and uh yes i appreciate the direction they were trying to go but it just seemed like it was way too much stuff thrown in there trying to make amends for what they think was was deficient for the last 20 years and i do appreciate it and i love it but i just think there was a little bit a little bit too 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 too, too much mm -hmm. I, I appreciate the simpler songs like bravest face and uh, even um you know the records like something simple like that where melody uh was still the most important thing for a rush you know getty lee is a big melody guy and when you, uh, the gravest face and the records, for example, has a beautiful chorus and it flows beautifully. Um, whereas a lot of those other songs, they're kind of like choppy here and there. And when you have that in combination to Getty's lyric, uh, vocals uh, being, you know, the way they were, I, I think that Nick could have done a better job, especially because they did have this, uh, you know, newfound appreciation for harder rock. And I think I, I would have liked to have seen that in the hands of somebody else. That's just my personal opinion. I thought the oh. albums could have been produced a bit better. Hmm. But you did a really damn good job explaining it. I mean, yeah, really. yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hate having my. I was, I was all ears. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I hate having my mind change. Mm. Peter. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I always really. appreciated the melody. You know, Getty's always about the melody and uh, like the pass. And yeah, you listen, did a really good job. Solo album. I think uh, Ryan, you you appreciate a solo album, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And yeah. you just see that sense, and, and it doesn't have to be so busy. It never had to be busy. Rush didn't have to be so busy. And that's it, those last two albums, I think, are just very, very busy. And it didn't mm -hmm. really need to be. Yeah, it's great for musicianship. And if you're a musician, which I'm not, I collect instruments from all over the world, but I'm not a musician. But I, we don't have to be, uh, what's his name? Um, Joe Satriani or even um, Ingwe Malmsteen. Just because he's the yeah. fastest does not mean he's creating the best kind of music. That's yeah, or, or yeah. art or art. Yeah. So I think that those two albums were trying to uh, display some uh, virtuos, virtuoso uh, instrumentation that Nick wanted to display, but I don't know if it, it, it uh, uh, marriaged so well with the melody and the overall mm -hmm. music and the message of the songs, which I think could have deserved a little bit better fate. That's just my opinion. And I'm just an old guy. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I think yeah. we could all. We, we, I think we could all agree that you did a really great job explaining that. Thank you. Oh yeah. 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 Um. All right. Well, uh, Paul, we'll let you uh, sing the theme song to take us out. <laughs> theme song? What? There's a theme song on it. There is now. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> what theme song are you talking about? <laughs> I had I don't know. <laughs> Sing something. Doom, do, 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 do. Go ahead. Anyway, everyone, you know, you know the usual. Lick, click, like, lick, subscribe. Lick, 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 lick the subscribe yeah. button. See this, Derek? That's right. Lick. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> leave your leave your comments below. We read them all. We love to read them and 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 debate. Well, if we don't debate online, or do we, Ryan? Are you allowed? Oh, online, that's all people do is debate. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> anyway, I hope you had as much fun as listening as we had fun doing it. So until next time, have a good night. We'll talk to you later.